Welcome to the Digital Business Evolution Podcast, a place that you can now call home. I know you're creating long lasting impact in this world, and you absolutely deserve the time, location, career, and financial freedom that you desire. I'm here to guide you with proven strategies, tools, and mindset hacks that I've taught to thousands of business owners. You'll also be hearing from exceptional guests sharing stories of their own personal and business evolution. My name is Jessica DeRose, and I'm here to teach you what I'm learning. We are all inherently worthy, regardless of the number of degrees, awards, and accolades that we've collected along the way. Grab a notebook, a coffee, and enjoy the show. Hey, 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 welcome back. We are here and we are chatting today about the most important phase, the most important part of a launch. And in my personal opinion, after working with thousands of entrepreneurs, this is often the most forgotten phase of a launch. In fact, I know I forgot this phase of launch for a very long time until I started to learn my lesson the hard way. So if you know anything about launches, they can feel heavy and exhausting and long, and they can also feel exhilarating, exciting, lively, energetic, just incredible. And my team and I at Digital Business Evolution just wrapped our Launch of Empower, which is our signature 12-week group coaching program that we only open twice per year. We are on our 15th class of Empower. That is just one program alone. So over the last couple of years of entrepreneurship, we have launched, I have launched 60, 70 different times, maybe even more. And so I've learned a thing or two. And if you follow a very traditional launch model straight from the book Launch by Jeff Walker, we talk about, or he talks about the four different phases of launch. So the first phase is your pre-pre-launch. And that's basically where you're creating a little bit of hype. Think of Hollywood when they put a movie out. It could be Christmas time and they start putting out trailers for this movie and they sort of start teasing it and you start to see a little bit about it, but it just says coming Memorial Day weekend, right? So months in advance, they start to pre-pre-launch. They sort of tease it out. They warm people up to the idea. And for you, if you're in coaching, if you're in digital entrepreneurship, if you're in using social media for marketing, that's you basically teasing it out, letting people know it's part of the market research phase. Lots of different things are going on during pre-pre-launch. The second phase is pre-launch. And that's where you are starting to really enroll people. So this would be in Hollywood where these actors and actresses are now doing guest talking. You know, they're going to talk shows, they're on news stations, they're on the radio, they're doing all these interviews and they're talking about this upcoming movie, but they still don't tell you necessarily everything, but they're out there. Now the trailer's gotten a little longer. It's giving you a little bit more information. You're starting to see what's going on. And so for you and your business, this might be where you start to do some sort of a lead up. You might be doing what we call runway where you're hosting like a free webinar or something like that. Maybe a masterclass. All of your content is very smartly, I don't know if that's a word, but you're very intuitively sort of training and preparing your people for what's to come. Then we have the launch. Now the launch is where people think that's just selling, but that's not necessarily true. The launch itself is where you're really building your email list. You're getting people to come into your masterclass. Maybe you're hosting a webinar, a challenge, whatever your launch mechanism is. They're a part of this ecosystem that you've created. Now you are putting them through some sort of a training. You're giving them value. You're showing them what it would be like to work with you. And ultimately in the launch, you're going to then present your offer. And so your offer is going to be the product or the program or the course or whatever that is that you have for them. You're going to be selling that. And so in Hollywood, this is literally where box box office opens and you can buy tickets. And so now maybe that's pre-sale tickets or maybe that's actually movie night opening, but you can buy tickets. You can go to the theater. You can actually watch the thing. It's like we bought the tickets to the show and now the show is here. And then the fourth part, which is the part that most people forget about, is the post-launch. In my opinion, this is the most important part because without this information, you're never going to grow your launch in the future. So they say math is the path or in business metrics matter. And so post-launch review or a debrief is what enables you to collect all of the data, all of the results, or all of the stories that have been told through what you created. And that way you can tweak them, modify them, hone in on them. You can look at what worked, what didn't work, how you felt, how the team felt. You can look at all of the numbers and you can start to assess for a future launch. 
This is especially important when you're doing something like running ads. This is literally how you figure out your ad spend. It's always math is the path. If we had X amount of people, they came into our launch, they were part of our masterclass, and X amount showed up live, and then X amount joined our email list, and then X amount joined our wait list. This is a funnel. We're bringing it down, 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 down. X amount enrolled in the program. Well, now we know if we want 10x amount of people for next time, we're going to need 10x amount of leads to get into our actual launch funnel. And so now you can appropriately determine what your ad spend would be. So this is huge. And I'm going to just give you some numbers because I'm a visual person. So back in the day when I was just a solopreneur before I had a team, when I was launching our signature program in Power, I always knew this. This is basically how the numbers went. If I wanted to get a class of 40, which I love a good class of 40, this is how it would work. I would need 100 applications because we used to do an application process. So 100 applications would have to come in. Then from there, I would offer all of those people, barring they were a good fit, so about 90 of those people, I would offer them to set up a sales call or a discovery call. From there, statistically and historically, because I have the data, 60 people would book a call. So of the 90, about 60 would book a call. And of the 60, 50 would show up. So 10 would always cancel last minute or be a no-show. And if I got 50 people on the call, I would close, or as we teach in our programs, I would open 40. And so I would get a class of 40. So 100 applications would yield 90 opportunities, 60 booked calls, 50 would show up, and I would open up 40. We say open because it's opening an opportunity. It's not closing an opportunity, right? And so if... If I was in launch and I only had 30 applications come in, I would know that it meant I need to change something. Maybe my opt-in page isn't converting well. Maybe I want to change my messaging. Maybe I'm not doing enough. Maybe I could be doing more lives. Maybe I could be doing outreach. Maybe I need to start asking friends to share. Maybe I want to kick up some referrals and see if I have past clients who could refer a different person, right? Refer a friend that might want to come in. But if I was at 30 applications... Well, based on my track record, I was not going to be enrolling 40 people. I probably shouldn't use the 30 as a number because obviously I wouldn't be enrolling 40 if I only got 30 applications. But if I got 50 applications based on my numbers, I still would not be getting 40 up, 40 enrollments. So I knew every launch I needed 100 applications to yield 40 people to enter. And so that way, if I knew I wanted a class of 80, well, simple math would say I would need about 200 applications. I'd also be doing a lot more sales calls, so I'd need some help, right? Or more time. So your post-launch review is huge. Now, in the past, like I said, I've launched 60, 70 times, different programs, products, masterminds, courses, evergreen, passive, you name it. Like I've had every different thing under the sun over the years. Memberships, high ticket, low ticket, quite literally all of it. The only thing that I used to measure for a really long time was how much money did I make? How many people did I enroll? And did I hit my goal of how much money I wanted to make and how many people I wanted to enroll? So it was really only those three things. How much money? How many people? Did I hit my goal? And that would typically leave me pretty unsatisfied, as I'm sure you can imagine. And maybe you've done this. Maybe you've had a couple extra little things that you've tracked, but maybe that's basically the gist. Did you hit the number? Did you hit the money? Are you happy with it? Eh. And you kind of leave it at that. And so despite the fact if I did hit my goals or did not hit my goals, no matter what, I would beat myself up. I would judge myself. I would get upset. I would be disappointed. I would say things like, I should have stretched myself more. The few times that I did hit my goal, well, why didn't I dream bigger? Why didn't I make a bigger goal? That wasn't enough. And the gratitude and the bliss and the joy that I would feel from the launch would very quickly fade into judgment, disappointment, and lack. And you can judge me. It's fine. You can you can totally roll your eyes right now and judge me. But I'm here to teach you a lesson. I'm here to teach you what I've learned. That's all that this podcast is, is me just sharing things that I've learned. And so I can so clearly remember I had two... $260,000 launches back to back. They were about three weeks apart. So we can basically say that I did over 500,000 in sales 
it was, it was over that, but over 500,000 in sales in just about a month's time. And I remember laying on the couch crying. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think it was going to last. When was the other shoe going to drop? And I still didn't feel worthy because while it was $520,000 in five weeks, I, which by the way, I made $50,000 as an elementary school teacher. So that's like bananas, bonkers, absolutely out of this world. Doesn't even make sense to me that this happened a couple of years ago. But at the time, while I was sitting in all of this gratitude and pinch me, it doesn't feel real. It's like monopoly money. Like this can't actually be happening. It was also, I'm not good enough. Why wasn't it 600,000? Why wasn't it 750,000? How am I going to keep up with it? I should have done X, Y, Z. I should have done this differently. And so the interesting thing is those moments like that are what sort of shake me and wake me up to get me thinking about things differently. And so over the last couple of years, since that had happened, we've gone on to have incredible launches like that back to back to back to back. But what we do now, and I say we because it's the team and I, we've created systems. We've created, we've created a machine that allows us to me- measure all of our metrics and then take action on those things. So what I mean here is when we go into a launch, we don't say how many people, how much money. We come up with a list of, gosh, this last launch that we just did, we had over 30 metrics that we were measuring. In fact, each team member has their own metric that they're responsible for. We typically have two metrics that we're responsible for every single quarter of the year. So we have four people on our internal team. So our executive like C-suite for digital business evolution is four people. And the four of us each have two metrics that we're responsible for for every single quarter of the year. Every Monday that we get on a coaching call, I'm sorry, every Monday that we get on a team meeting, we review our metrics. We talk about what the number was, did we hit the goal? If we didn't, why didn't we? And then we all brainstorm together as a team How can we assist that person to help them hit their goal for the next week? Now, all we're really looking for is 1% growth. If we get 1% growth week after week after week, that's 52% growth for the entire year. That's pretty epic. So it's okay if it's not huge. It's okay if we sometimes stay the same. It's okay if we sometimes slip, but we're really just looking for 1% growth in all of these areas. So every quarter of the year, we're focusing on eight different metrics, two for each person that we are responsible for. Meaning not just tracking them we're responsible before, but we're responsible to help that metric grow and figure out why it's not. Now, when we're in launch, we have specific launch metrics. So we still have our eight metrics that we're measuring on the side for the whole company. But then inside of launch, we have, like I said, there was about 30 metrics this round. So it wasn't Did we make the money that we wanted to make? And did we enroll the number of people we wanted to enroll? Because if it was... Then if you were to ask me if the launch was successful, I would say kind of, because we've quite frankly never really hit our goal because our goals are really big and they're really stretchy. And so I don't know that I ever want to hit my numbers goal. I don't know that I ever want to hit that financial goal. If I do hit it, if we do hit it, it tells me that we didn't dream big enough, that we didn't stretch ourselves enough. It's kind of like that saying, you know, shoot for the moon, land on the stars. No, shoot for the stars, land on the moon. That's how we feel about the business and the metrics that we're creating. And so, yeah, if you were to ask me, was this last last launch successful? If I were looking at the number of people and the revenue, it was good. It was okay. It was, I mean, it was great. It was incredible. But did we hit the goal? No, we didn't. And so if those were the only two metrics and we did not hit that goal, then we would have failed. And the reality is this launch was absolutely the opposite of a fail. This was probably the most successful launch that we've ever had, despite those two numbers, because that goal is so big. And so now we've got this laundry list of metrics, which I'm going to talk you through some of them, and you're going to create them for yourself and your business. And if you don't have a team, you're still going to create these because these are really important because these numbers now give us, they write us a story. They give us a full picture. They give us something to work with. This is how your business can become sustainable, scalable, and ultimately profitable, which is what we all want. And so I have a list here. I'm not going to read through everything, but we do a general overview metric list. So in general, 
how much fun were we all having? And if we had to grade these things, scale of one to five, five is the best, one is not really existent. Maybe you even say we can't pick three. So that forces people to either think one, two, four, five. So questions like how much fun were we all having during launch? How easy was it? How light did it feel? How strong was our team communication? How well did we take care of ourselves? Like how many times have you done a launch and for the week or two that you're launching, you just stop going to the gym? You stop working out, you stop journaling, you stop meditating because you're so busy just doing all this other stuff that you stop taking care of yourself. Maybe you're eating garbage, like frozen pizzas and ice cream because you're stressed out. So how well did we take care of ourselves? How many times did we cry? Did anybody on the team cry? Was anyone completely burned out and exhausted? How prepared were we ahead of time? How far in advance were we prepared? How well did everything flow together? How organized were we? How many mistakes slipped through the cracks? You know, little things like, oh my gosh, this has totally happened to me before. It's probably happened to you too. You send out an email and the email says like, insert link here, but like it still says insert link here, even though it went out. Maybe the link is there, maybe it's not, but the parentheses where the person was supposed to remove it still says that. So how many little mistakes like that slipped through the cracks? How many links didn't work? How many pages redirected, right? So that's all just like general overview stuff. That right there was almost 10 questions, 10 different, 10 different metrics. The next one, when we're doing a launch, we have some sort of an opt-in. We have some sort of a free experience that people come to. That itself is the launch. That's where we build the launch list. Email lists are not built by themselves. Launches build email lists, right? So when you have a launch and you're offering people a webinar, a masterclass, a challenge, a free experience, some sort of a training, they opt in, they get on your email list where you can continue to nurture them. They come to your experience, which for us, we just did a live experience. And then from there, you sell them, you pitch them, you offer them and invite them the opportunity to join the thing that you're selling. And so with that, for the opt-in free experience, how many leads did we have? Did we hit the goal there? How well did our opt-in page convert? I don't know if you know this, but you can track all of these things. So when you create an opt-in page, based on how many people click it, how many people view it, how many people opt into it, you can get data on the back end of your system. For us, we use Kajabi from your email marketing system. It will tell you your conversion rate. And so how well did our page convert? How well did it convert versus last time? So what was our present percentage conversion from this launch versus last launch? How much did it grow? For us, we used a Facebook group to build a community during our launch as well. So how many of those opt-ins actually joined the Facebook group? What was the percentage? How many people joined the lives? We have stats on how many people watched the replays that we sent out. How engaged was our Facebook group? How engaged were things that we did like extra bonus trainings? I offered q and A. I I offered interviews. How engaged were people? What was our email open rate? What was our email click-through rate? So all of our emails with different buttons and links, what was the click-through? What was our total of new email opt-ins? So these are all metrics that we've been measuring or we did measure coming in from our free experience. Now, from there, we're going to the more traditional metric of sale, right? So the sales conversion. How many of our leads actually enrolled in Empower? What was our total revenue? What was our total profit after our overhead? Now, overhead for you might just be things like the platform you pay for, maybe like Canva and Kajabi and Typeform, DocuSign. Maybe you have coaches like we do and you're paying coaches out. Maybe you outsourced something for your website. Maybe you did some graphic outsourcing. Fiverr, maybe you hired somebody to do a landing page for you. Maybe you hired a copywriter to do your emails. Maybe you paid for ads. So take that into consideration. And then if you did, what was your EPL? So your earnings per lead. And what was your CPL? Your cost per lead. That's if you're running ads. What was your sales conversion percentage? Did you do calls? How many sales calls did you get on? Rather, how many sales calls were booked? How many did you... How many actually showed up? How many did you get on? How many did you close? Or if you're like me, open. If you just used a click to buy sales page, how did that convert? So that's about 10 different things right there in sales conversion. And then the last metric like topic is under impact. So how many lives will be changed from everything that we just did? What's the ripple that this new client is going to cause in the world? 
how many more people could this one person help? Who's going to be impacted in the future? Now, these are really hard things to measure, but this is stuff I want you to think about. For us, we do a one-for-one like Tom's shoes. So every person that enrolls in our program, we donate education to one student overseas for one year of schooling over with Pencils of Promise in Africa. And so for us, that's really important. Based on the number of people that enrolled, how many students are we now going to be providing school for overseas? How many teachers are we going to be paying into their salaries for overseas? How will that affect future generations for them? What opportunities could that turn up to, turn into? You can't even measure those things, but I want you to think about all of the things that I'm saying. It's not, did we hit our goal number? Did we make the money and enroll the people that we wanted? I've just listed out 30, 40 things for you that the team and I have been measuring very, very mindfully, very intentionally, and very strategically so that we can take these numbers into the future launch. Heck, if we know that we had a thousand people in this launch, which we did, we just had over a thousand people in this launch, which was incredible. And X amount of people joined our class. And if we want to double that next time, well, we know right off the bat, we're going to need 2000 people in the launch. Those people are called leads. So we'll need 2000 leads if we want to double our class size because math is the path. Now, is it possible that we could double our class size with less than 2,000 leads? Of course. And is it possible, is it true that we could double the class size but actually need more than 2,000 leads? Yes. But in general, math is the path and this is the best way to run your business. So the stats now tell us 1,000 leads yield X amount of people. And so if we want to double the class size, then we're going to be doubling the lead size, which tells us what? Well, Maybe, and this is what the team and I get to sit down and debrief on, maybe we need to do a better job of getting it out earlier. Maybe we want more runway leading up to the launch. Maybe our messaging was a little bit off. Maybe our conversion page or, or the page that we had converted a little bit too low. So maybe that's a messaging thing. Maybe it was the picture that we used. Maybe it is looking for people to help with referrals, word of mouth. Maybe I need to get on more podcasts ahead of time and really like map out a podcast tour which also is a metric. How many podcast episodes did I do as a guest where I got to speak about what we were doing? How many did we reach out to? How many were booked? And then how many actually aired before our launch? Now that we have our own podcast, this is something to consider as well. What are the topics leading up to launch that I'm talking about? If I'm having guests come on, let's be intentional who those guests are and what they're talking about. So thinking about like a holistic approach to your launch, a holistic approach to your business rather than did we hit the number? Because I just listed like 40 metrics of which we blew through the freaking roof. I told you it was the best launch that we've ever had. However, the number of people that enrolled and the financial revenue was lower than we wanted. But that doesn't mean that this launch was a flop. The team had the most fun we've ever had. We worked together incredibly. There were basically zero mistakes the entire time. Our energy was up. We were cheering each other on. We had incredible ideas. We implemented new things. Everything was automated. We had more time. It was more, it was lighter than it's ever felt. Our email sequence, our click through, our conversion rate, our sales page, our opt in like crushed it. Crushed it. I had the best time hosting it. We have the most incredible members that have joined, like the most amazing class ever. But we didn't hit our number because our goal is so big. So now what the team and I are doing actually today, we have a two and a half hour meeting where we're going to be doing our full launch debrief. Now we've already talked to one another about the numbers. We've already looked at the metrics, but today we're doing a full debrief and we're asking each other questions like, How did each of us feel? What was the perspective that we each had on the launch? What were three things that each of us did well? What are three things that each of us could be working on? And this is what we are saying as individuals. And then what are three things that we think other team members did really well? And so we go around and we tell each other who did what and how they did it and what we were impressed by. And also without getting upset by it, critiquing one another where we think we could have done better, where we dropped the ball, where communication could have been better. And so something that I want to encourage you to do that I've learned over time 
is number one, you're not going to do all this right away, especially if you're a solopreneur. So do not get overwhelmed. Number two, have time scheduled before your launch starts. Schedule time off for yourself after the launch. Not like three weeks later. When it ends, when doors close, schedule something ahead of time so that you have a couple days off. Maybe you have a weekend. Maybe you have a massage. Maybe you're going out with friends. But have something scheduled ahead of time so that you don't forget and you don't allow yourself to get busy and ignore those boundaries so that you have proper time to reflect and recharge. Now, when you're listening to this episode, you could probably notice that my voice is a little raspy. The team and I just got back from Vegas. We did three days of just straight hanging out, did nothing, sat by the pool, went to the spa, got a massage, and it was awesome. Totally unplugged. And then we partied for two days. We took them out to dinner, we did a nightclub, and we did a pool party because that's what we like to do. And it was so much fun. And they deserve to just be spoiled and have time off and recharge. And one of our team members is taking an actual vacation this week. She's going away to Guatemala. And that's what we want, right? We want to make sure that's scheduled in ahead of time. So even if you're a solopreneur and you're working by yourself, you can do this for yourself. Another key thing is to make your changes now. So when we do our launch debrief meeting today, if we all come up with the idea that something could have been better, or we should make a change on our opt-in page. We're not going to wait until the next launch to make the change. We are physically making the changes on the pages and in the emails this week while it's fresh in our heads. Not just fresh in our head because of the meeting, but fresh in our head because we just did this launch. All of our changes will be done today, this week, so that for the future launch, we're just going in and we're making sure everything's good to go and that we're ready and we're prepared. But changes are happening now. Something else to consider is that a change is different than an enhancement. And so be mindful of how many changes you're making from launch to launch. Because when you change a lot of things, you now have too many variables and you can't measure why something is working or why it's not. So let me give you an example. A change would be like completely redoing all of your messaging on your opt-in page completely redoing your sales page, a change would be going from you used to do an application process and now you're doing click to buy. These are changes. A change would be you used to host everything on Zoom and now you're hosting it in a Facebook group and you expect people to be there live. That's a change. It's also a very big barrier to entry for people. An enhancement would be tweaking the picture that's on your opt-in page from a profile picture of you looking sideways to you actually smiling, looking directly at the camera, which historically does better for most people because it really creates that connection for the person looking at the page. An enhancement would be something that we did this round. Instead of just telling people when the lives were going to be, we inserted a function. We used a company that allowed us to insert a click function where they could click it and the event was directly posted onto their Google Calendar. That's an enhancement. It made it easier for the person. It wasn't a change. It just enhanced the user experience. So for us, we don't like to make more than one to two changes max from launch to launch. A change would be this time we did a live experience, which is very similar to like a webinar. If next time we decided to do a five-day challenge, that would be a change. Those are two very different things. So be mindful of how many changes you're making. And while you might want to make changes because things didn't go the way that you wanted them to, and you think that you need to scrap everything and start over, that in fact could be hurting your business in the long term. So make more enhancements, minor, small, less changes, one to two, and make those changes now, right? Another thing that we always do, and I I kind of alluded to this earlier, is we want to hear how the launch went from each team member's perspective. Not just me not just one, not just someone, right? Like we want to hear how everybody felt and how it went from everybody's perspective. But because, because not but, because for me, something that could have been successful might not have been for somebody else. Something that might have felt easy for me might have felt hard for somebody on my team. And it's important for us to know that. Allow the data and your metrics to tell a story without emotion. If you know anything about launching, if you've ever worked with a coach, you probably have heard detach from the outcome, right? Detach from the outcome. It doesn't have anything to do with you, your value, your worth as a human. 
It doesn't have to do with how good you are of a person, how bad you are, how good of a coach you are, how good of a leader you are. It tells a story, but do it without emotion. And this is why I love these metrics so much so much because these metrics are numbers. The numbers don't mean anything about me, but the metrics tell a story. The numbers tell a story. And with that story, we can create different, new, better, bigger stories in the future. And the last part is to just celebrate the heck out of your clients, the progress that you're making, the growth that you've had, the impact that you're making, and the fact that you get to do this. It's incredible. It's incredible what you get to do. Being an entrepreneur, even a solo, a solopreneur, a side hustler, it's like the coolest freaking thing in the world. We are just sharing our lived experience through our lived perspective. We're sharing our stories. We're, we're connecting with people. We're teaching people what has worked for us. And we're making a really big impact in this world. And then we get rewarded with income. And we get to do it in our sweaty gym clothes that we haven't showered yet with our dirty baseball hat with no makeup on. We get to do it from home. We get to do it from the beach. We get to do it from a click of a phone, from a single post, from a single conversation, from a podcast episode. episode. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Your future clients deserve you, or I should say your future clients deserve you taking the time to do a proper post-launch review. It's not over until you say it's over. And don't just kick your feet up and think that you don't have to do anything again until it's the next time you launch. Because that, my friend, is when you will feel that launches are heavy, hard, and you struggle. So take into consideration all of the phases. When you're an entrepreneur, you're never not launching. It doesn't have to feel hard or salesy. It's just seasons of the business. Nurturing, building relationships, putting an invitation out on the table, and then checking back to see how did it all go? That's all that it is. So don't put so much pressure on yourself. I hope this was helpful. As always, take a screenshot, share it to social media. I'd love to geek out about this stuff. If you want to hear more about launches, if you want to hear more about something specific that I talked about today, maybe it's when we started talking about some of the things that felt heavy, like EPL and CPL. Maybe we were talking about you know, ads. Maybe we were talking about different launch mechanisms and you want to hear more about that. Different sales strategies. Should you be doing applications? Should you be doing click to buy? I would love to talk to you about it. So just DM me. Let me know that you were listening to this episode. Just DM me the word launch and let's start a conversation. If I'm getting the feeling from you that you want to hear more about it, I will absolutely do a totally brand new episode on whatever topic you're asking for because that is what I'm here for. That's what it's like. That's what this whole podcast is about. So as always, if you love this, please share it out with a friend, share it on social, tag me. I am Jessica DeRose. You can also tag the digital business evolution. It would mean the world to me. The more people that get to listen to this podcast, the more lives that we get to impact and the more incredible, incredible, incredible guests I get to have on the show. So as always, cheers to your evolution. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, I invite you to be a part of our ripple effect and share it with a friend. And please, if you feel called, take 30 seconds to leave a five-star review and I'll be forever grateful. Until next time, cheers to your evolution.